you know, sometimes I feel that if I was like to have a stage name, I would probably change it to Monica Lestrange. <laughs> That's how we're gonna start this video. Hello guys, my name is Monica, not Lestrange, and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today is the second little segment of a segment <laughs> that I started recently called book chats because I have no imagination and that's what I called it. Today I want to talk to you about something else that book Twitter and booktube and everywhere is um, kind of like a hot topic. It's the idea of problematic books and stuff. Now, uh, this is such a, like a delicate subject. I don't even know how I'm gonna approach this and that's kind of why I like these book chats because it's literally just like how I feel about something at the moment and I don't script anything. I just kind of turn on my camera and get going. The whole idea for this book chat came from this little bundle that I got in the mail. I was thinking about a book tag that I did recently which is called the... Uh, what is it? I don't remember which book tag it was but it asked basically the question, what is your guilty pleasure book that you own? In the beginning I was like, I don't have any guilty pleasure books, but I'm a dirty little liar because I am trash for V.C. Andrews' Flowers in the Attics series. Oh my gosh. And then it got me thinking that I actually am trash for incest books. <gasps> I know, I know, I know, Monica's the worst, oh my gosh, she supports incest. No. I don't. Also, I have a brother and a sister. Ugh, just ugh, at the idea of me and the ugh, ugh, I'm gonna vomit. But then why do I love books with incest in them? And it got me thinking about how we are very quick to turn on people that like books with problematic issues in them, with um, adults that fall for you know, not kids, not kids, but like teenagers, older teenagers. Um, we have issues with books that, you know, talk about these, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to specifically like sexual things because then there's this whole problematic issue of misrepresentation of gender and race and blah, blah, blah. Well, that, that's another subject, but with, with kinks, let's talk about kinks. And how people sometimes are really quick to be like, I can't believe you like a book where a teacher falls in love with a student. That's disgusting. Does that mean you support that? No. I mean, let's be honest. There's a reason why we all delete our porn search history. It's because we've got kinks. And sometimes those kinks are just fantasies that we would never indulge in in the real life or you know or maybe you would i, I don't know it, I, that's another talk I, i'm not a psychologist no but anyway but we all have fantasies and we all enjoy these kinky stuff but just because we read about them and because we like them doesn't mean that we support them in the real world. For example, Jane Eyre. I, why do I keep talking about Jane Eyre? Let's talk about another one. Oh, we're gonna talk about Jane Eyre. Spoiler warning, I'm about to spoil Jane Eyre for you if you haven't read it. Let's talk about Mr. Rochester and how he fucking lied to Jane and how he kept his wife hidden. Mr. Rochester is a, is a weirdo and he's just not the nice, like he he's not, He's not a guy that if my girlfriend came to me and was like, hey, guess what? I met this guy named Mr. Rochester and he had to dress up like a gypsy and he made me think that he was gonna marry someone else but actually he's in love with me. I'd be like, girl, no. No, get away from that. In reality. But in the book, I shipped them so hard and I wanted them to be together. If, what? my neighbors my neighbors are not taking this quarantine well they're not but anyway so if somebody in my real life came up to me and was like i want to have sex with my brother i'd be like first of all why are you telling me second of all i <laughs> you know? there's a whole power dynamic a whole thing there that i mean i don't know man maybe 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 there's something a therapist should you know you should talk to, to a therapist about 
But that being said, that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy reading about it. Because I do. I do. It's, it's, it's like a, a... I can't believe I'm putting this on the internet. I'm so sorry for anybody that's watching this and <laughs> thinks that I am into incest. <laughs> Only in books, guys, and in, in, in TV shows and stuff. It's just, it's a taboo thing. Humans, we are like that. We, we are drawn. That's why kinks exist. That's why BDSM is a thing. And again, these are fantasy things. These are not real things. These are, these are stories where they make you believe that you know, that this is okay. This would not be okay in the real world. Most of the things we read about are not okay in the real world. And the idea of, you know, you fucking your brother is probably not a great idea in the real world, but it's a kink. It exists. Get over it. And it doesn't mean, and the same thing goes with like abusive boyfriend relationships. And I know that that has a root in psychology of women feeling inferior and the whole power struggle between men and women and I understand that I'm not I'm not an idiot you know I, I'm not an ignorant person I understand that these things happen but there's also the whole there are there is a whole genre of women like humiliating men and being you know the ones that decide and all of these things are okay within the realm of fantasy or not not fantasy of fiction writing and it's okay to enjoy them it's really is okay it's okay for you to enjoy a lot of things in these books that should not be enjoyed how many times have we read books with murder in them and with revenge and with really bad things that we would condemn in real life but it's okay within a story because it's not real. The same thing with video games. I would never shoot a person in real life unless my, you know, unless it was a life and death situation, whatever. But I will happily play Bioshock where I kill anybody that gets in my way. I wouldn't do that in real life. <laughs> I wouldn't. But I will do it in a game. That doesn't mean that it's something that I think is okay in real life. It isn't. Well, hello there. Don't I look different from the last time you saw me in this video? But the thing is, this is future Monica realizing that she forgot to talk about something that she should have talked about in this video and she's talking about herself in the third person, but that doesn't matter. The point is, let's get back to it. So we were talking about how just because you like to read problematic things or just because there are problematic things in books that you enjoy that doesn't mean that you are okay with these problematic things in real life because you know that's not how it works but one thing I forgot to say and that I want to add here to the end is just because an author writes a problematic thing into their book doesn't mean that they are okay with it either like it doesn't, I just don't understand this because again, it's like, do you really think the people that create Call of Duty and that make these games are okay with war and with killing people? They're not, they're not, they're not okay with it. It's not like that. The thing is that, you know, sometimes we want to let out steam by playing a first person shooter. That's okay. That doesn't mean you want to shoot people no matter what the media says. And that means that the creators of the games and the people that come up with these ideas don't think that these are good things either. Again, we read books with murder in them and we read books with like, you know what, I'm gonna stick with murder because we seem to be a-okay with characters murdering each other. Like that's fine, but you know, the moment we get into sexual territory, then that's where things get a little dicey. Again, I'm. I just don't understand why it's not okay for us to enjoy problematic literature and understand that just because an author writes about problematic literature, like that doesn't mean that 
they agree with what they're right like that doesn't mean that they support it just because somebody writes a romance where the guy or the girl or the person is a dick that they think that we should be dating dicks that's not how it goes so yeah future monica just wanted to add that that let's not go after authors that write problematic romances because they don't write that because they feel that way and if they do well that's just another problem but that's in their personal life that has nothing to do with us okay Okay, now back to past Monica so she can end this video. Ah, I just, it upsets me so much when everybody's like, oh, this book was okay, but I can't get over the fact that it was problematic relationship. Okay, I get it. Maybe it was not your thing, but don't go off on people who enjoy those books, okay? Now, there is a caveat to this and that is the fact that i am an adult that i understand that this is fantasy and that i understand that these things are not okay in the real world if for example a 15 year old human being is reading these books and they start to think that it's okay for them to have a relationship with an abusive boyfriend or girlfriend or partner in general or that it's okay for you to um you know want to fuck your brother and sister or you know that kind of stuff is where it starts to get a little dicey i'm speaking from the perspective of an, an adult who is relatively stable in her life and who understands that these are works of fiction. I think that that's where the whole line becomes drawn. For example, um, Flowers in the Attic was not written for children. Even then, if this hypothetical young person reads these books or plays these games or watches these movies, I think that if they are healthy, and they understand healthy relationships, it's not a problem. The problem is we live in a world where healthy relationships are almost the exception, not the rule. So I understand why for younger audiences, this is a problem. But what bothers me is when people go after older YouTubers or well, booktubers that enjoy perhaps a really problematic romance you're allowed to enjoy problematic romances because they're not real and it's not a reflection about how you feel in your real life it's a reflection of maybe a kink you have or you know something that you just enjoy within the realms of fiction and not the realm of reality so that's my rant that's my thing and I stan Flowers in the Attic by B.C. Andrews. I love this series. I really love this series. I actually read it when I was very young and I still understood that incest is not a, a thing that is, you know, okay in real life. <laughs> I got that. Like, I knew that. So that's also why I, 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 I think that it just, Depends on how, again, you view healthy relationships and whether you have an idea of what a healthy relationship looks like. I, I understand that there is power struggles. I understand that domestic abuse is wrong. I understand all of these things, okay? I, I get it. I'm glad that, for example, when I was younger, I didn't read certain things because I would have romanticized them. I hope this makes sense. I really hope that this makes sense because I've seen so many people attack. I don't know if it's the Shadow Hunters one where they're like brother and sister in the end and it started like a Harry Potter fan fiction and, and it turns out that they were Ginny and Ron and whatever, whatever. I mean, as long as there is really no harm being done with the enjoyment of these things, then who the fuck cares? So 
that's pretty much it for this book chat. Uh, I hope that I got my point across. I don't know if I did. Uh, you're allowed to disagree with me down in the comments. You're allowed to agree with me. Um, this is just a place for me to express opinions about bookish things and that this was something that was kind of gnawing at my noggin. I think that's the second time. I think that that's how I'm just gonna sign out out of all of these book chat things. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you if you got through, through this and are not like hating on me right now. I'm very nervous to post this video but I think it's an interesting topic to discuss. Um, and well, without anything else to say, I just want to remind you that I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and sometimes if I'm feeling extra saucy, I'll post on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but not on Saturday and Sunday because your girl needs to rest. And with that being said, I bid you adieu, and I tell you, enjoy your kinks. You're allowed to. <laughs> All right, guys? I'll talk to you later. Bye! Kinky, kinky. Ah, oh, this video would be so demonetized if I were monetized. <laughs>